Hello and welcome back to Indie Gamer. I've just been watching Outstars and the live on Twitch just the last hour and so I discovered some new Vampire the Masquerade game. Um, what inspired or whatever. Uh, and so I wanted to um, have a look at the different ones that have been kind of highlighted. And so looks pretty cool I will I'm just checking that it's working fine uh, and that it's streaming okay um, because I'm gonna be testing waning crescent yeah okay it seems to be playing fine and so I'm really excited because um, there's a lot of things happening around um, games inspired by the masquerade like based on the masquerade and all that so i find that really cool first to have more people that i can connect to because i'm developing a game based well inspired by bloodlines that is taking place in montreal but as i've been doing that for a while i don't really know know what the landscape is out there and so I like to compare what I'm doing with whatever they are doing. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know about the um, the month of um, I don't know if it's if it was a game jam or anything. But I want to try those games because I love that law and that context and all that. So I'm really curious about whatever is being done in that landscape. So, I'm gonna be playing Winning Crescent. Uh, it's a blind test, I don't know anything about the game, so hopefully it's all gonna work fine, and I'm gonna be falling in love with it. I hope that my the tweet posted by Streamlab OBS, oh no, it's still not the right freaking preview it's annoying because I would love to be able to display the um, the preview from their page or whatever but it all, always I need to put my twitch icon so it's a bit silly okay next item of order the declaiming of women in the dark So it's playing my voice as well. The declaiming of woman in the dark livery stands stiff-necked. Too much touch on a horn. Okay. So I'm going to click it away. I must allow myself the luxury of silently mocking this congregation of monsters, lest I give them the satisfaction of my fear. Wow, cool drawings. And I like the characters and I like the background as well. It's really cool. Flyon Mayer, thin blooded, you stand in the court of Budapest and declared, infringing on the tradition of hospitality. In absence of your sire, their breach of progeny falls on you also. I'm just gonna double check that the audio is actually progeny. Yes. Falls on it's okay because I've seen some videos and you can barely hear what people are saying, so you're like absorbed in the game and you want to have the comments but at the same time if you can never understand what they're saying because it's kind of not really balanced so i was just checking that in absence of your sire blah 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 falls on you also she poses the stark echo of her voice tumbling down uh, back and forth again the frescoed ceiling of saxlene palace they must have picked this place for the acoustics to enhance the pomp. The prince's mercy allows you to take the mark of the crescent moon and continue your existence under Carmilla law. All my faults led upon me and my escape so narrowly it's stifling. I flight against the tightness of my chest and take a breath. Should I bow or should I look? 
I'm gonna look. She sits on a grand upholstered chair under the soft glare of the chandelier, and a coronet of diamonds sits glimmering on her dark gathered hair. Death throws a youthful looks and a sense of fashion. A white dress and pearl necklace looks like relics from before the Great War. In fact, so does the hovel of her face. I've seen it in school books and documentaries. A grip on my neck. The scourge forces me down. Knees, are, sorry, <laughs> knees and heels of my hands on the floor. A third of bone on marble. All I see of the prince now are her boots sticking out from under a dress, lined with little buttons. My cheeks burns as if slapped. You should be grateful, thin blood. We are benevolently allowing you a choice. A scourge's blade and a quick end now, or the crescent moon mark on your oversight and your oversight and protection. Prince Anastasia's voice is slow, cadenced. So much for mercy. Provided that a, that a generous member of this court cares to keep you in their domain. I shift my eyes left and right. The beautiful and the damned sitting around the room. Most of them would pass for human at a glance, at least until you see their eyes. They're avid, angry. They glitter in their finery and none of them are pretending to be anything but what they are. Dead things in fancy dress, as opposed to me, dead only in house. They are watching me, that cold thing in their eyes. I am tonight's entertainment, a passing thrill to live up dull eternity. To live an up dull eternity, sorry. Ooh, all strangers, except for two of them, a Nosferatu and a Toriado. I like the character design for sure. So I've posted on Twitter the, the tweet that OBS is um, putting out. I had only um, Moira, 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 Moira's profile. Um, so I just put her, but it seemed that it was a team of five or something. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me double check. Five or six people. Gaia, Katie, Very, so Very would have done the character design, I guess. Moira did the programming and sound design. Red Robotics did the music. Gaia and Katie did the writing and some narrative design and some editing. It's a shame because I would have liked to um, connect with all of them, but oh, there's also Red Robotics that did the music that I, I think I followed. Um, so if any of you is watching the video, please reach out to me um, because I would love to connect. If you all love the masquerade as much as I do, get in touch. Um, so I look down and seek help for neither. Um, okay, I look at the Toreador or I look at the Nosferatu. Which one do I want to look at? Mm. Um, I think I'm gonna go for the, the Toreador. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm not keen for Nosferatu. Like I don't mind them, but I. I don't connect with them, with the clan in itself. I don't want, like in Bloodlines, the gameplay is so unique, but not my style. Like, I would hate to 
I have to freaking sneak around the sewers and all that all the freaking time. So I'm gonna go for the Toreador. William Halley. Calling him a friend is at once too little and too much. What is he doing here? He sits closer to the wall, bloodlessly pale, a tide, in a tweed suit I've never seen him in before. Still in the way of statues, he is looking my way, though subtly unwillingly, you know, unwilling to be caught. Oh, the whispers. Am I a Malkavian? Look away, Florian. I startled, my eyes snapping to the floor again. Oh, he's uh, saying that telepathically. A shiver runs down my neck. William's mouth haven't moved. I realize which cold aura that this voice vibrates smoothly, crystal clear in my head. A rustle follows. I will take him. Whatever else there might be. A well-trained thin blood can be of use. This voice I this voice I hear with my ears. Thomas Vague, my Nosferatu acquaintance, secret protector, ambler. He speaks solemnly, solemnly, but with a touch of humor. Humor. There's humor or humor with an O or is just O U. Oh, okay, it's just different uh, if it's, I guess, Aussie, British, or American. Um, da 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 da. Uh, you never know. I like to find my typos, so. And I wasn't sure. It's like color L O R or L O U R, depending if it's North American or not. It makes me sound like I'm a pet. Typical. A dog. He'll keep leashed and muzzled and teach not to piss on the rug. William whispers again in my thoughts. Now listen. Say that Mr. Fake knew of you and did not denounce you. Though he has better standing than I. Discredit him and I may step in instead. My heart drums erratically. Funny how that still happens. Very well, then, Florian Mayer, the prince calls. What is your answer? I'm, I'd like to be able to do different voices for different characters, but I'm not that good. Um, That would be amazing if I could though, like I need to practice that a bit more. I look up and remember. Who's Thomas? Abba Thomas! I remember... I remember William? Okay, so far so good. I... I like the storytelling aspect, but I don't know, for me, like it's like in um, Countries of New York or Shadows of New York. I like the story, but I I need more in, especially, I don't know, in a video game about, like from the masquerade, I like that it's all focused on storytelling and and all that, but for me a video game needs to be a bit more than an interactive book. I don't know, I'm a bit... I, I want something more, like I need gameplay, I need puzzles. It's not only like choices you make. in a dialogue system. I found that a bit too simple. Like if it's 
choose your own story kind of thing. I'm like, I like that it's there's music and there's beautiful art, art style and stuff, but I want to be in the action. I just don't want to be told what's going on. You know, show don't tell. And video game for me is a medium that needs to be more like do, don't tell. Just showing me is not enough. I need to be involved. Like in Vamp Vampire the Free Defendu, the game that I'm developing, it's storytelling focused, but there's also some some kind of basic gameplay around the day and night cycle, around where to go, how to find your way. Like it's not just storytelling. It has to be a bit adventure and investigation not just dialogue choices. I find that a bit not enough. Um, the cat escapes my grasping fingers with a shrieking meal. N no, I need a person. Okay. It's late enough that I know I will see the Aurora soon. And, though I won't burn, I'd sooner have the fire than crawl through the day in this sorry state. But this place is not even... Uj Buddha. <laughs> okay. It's just Buddha's thrice damn residential street. And, at this hour of the night, there are no people outside. And this side of on this side of the Danube. Oh, okay, so we are... Did I say where we were? I can't remember. I fall to sit on the concrete base of a fence. The metal bars did dig against my back, the overgrown garden beyond my rustles. I press my palms against my eyes. My teeth have sharpened, lengthened, they rattle an ache in my mouth. This anger is not in the stomach, nor on of the flesh. This anger would make me try to tear up, to te tear up asphalt, bare-handed if I knew blood flowed in the ground beneath. I strain my ears. I hear a soft footstep. I jerk my head up and search the street frantically. The man I see keeps his hand in the pockets of his coat. I stare at the tendon flexing in his neck, visible above his calf and the eye neck of his cable knit sweater. Okay. He approaches along the sidewalk and then, oh, and then, uh, and when, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit confused, sorry. And when he's about to pass me, glances sideways to look at me. God, finally. I try to convince him to come close. Or I stay still and try to follow him as he leaves. I think I'm gonna stay still and try to follow him. Oh, okay. Well, that's mine, so why tell me it's not my style? <laughs> Play your choice, but we tell you your choice is wrong. <laughs> uh, lurking, yes, but I've never tried assaulting a man when he's distracted. Perhaps it's time to learn a new approach. Okay. My mouth is watering, as if I were staring at a dessert behind my, the glassy window of a patisserie. The stranger takes a step ahead, and I see his mouth, uh, his mouth curl slightly, eyes glimmering with faint amusement. Then he turns his face straight toward me. 
I wouldn't have tried if I were you, by the way. That's why. My shallow breathing stops, and I am nailed to the cement of my seat. Okay. The curl is off. The curl of his mouth opens into a brief smile, flashing me his fangs. Well, fuck. I try to apologize. My jaw clenches. I want to bite him. I must bite him. His blood is thicker than a human's. It would be delicious. Sir, I am sorry if this is your domain. Not precisely, but you needn't worry. What's your name? Florian. I gape, the word fleeing out of my mouth too quickly and thinkingly. If he's with Liderk, Liderk, or any of the other Anarchs I double-crossed. This is certainly where my run ends, too far from Tama's domain for his cameras to protect me. But the stranger smiles, his expression oddly mellow, appealing. I am William Ali, a new Florian, acting a little starved. No one enjoys seeing a frenzy in the street, especially after you've been noticed loitering about the area for two nights. Besides, we are quite close to sunrise. The grey ace in the air adds to the agitation that rolls and roils in me, a parasite that can never breaks, break its shell. A beast too weak to awaken, but it doesn't know this. He hints down the street with a nod. Come, I know a place. Bereft of option and exhausted, I stand wobbly on my feet. The undead do nothing for free, but I'll worry about the cost later. That is true, that is so very true, so I follow. He makes me wait outside of a grey apartment building shadowed by old pines. When he comes to call me, the two women will welcome me in. Don't even look surprised by what I need. I wonder how long this game is. When I first met William, I had already been working for Tamas and did so afterward for month. What do you have for me tonight? The room is dark, except for a pool of amber from an expensive Tiffany lamp spilled across the old polished wood of the desk. Thomas sits half in the shadow and half in light, as he should, in chiaroscuro. It makes his gaunt face seem even sharper. Chiaro means light and bright, and oscuro means shadowy in Italian, I believe, so it's an interesting mix of the two words. I push the folder across the deck, and Tamas takes it, flipping through to skim my notes and look at the photographs I've taken, but I know he'll want me to give him a summary too. I recite quickly. Andras Kertes, Kertes, a phlebotomist at St. Rocco's Hospital, is addicted to painkillers and having trouble getting his fix. They've locked down the supply, probably noticed someone was skimming. Feed him what he needs, he'll get you blood bags and won't, and won't ask questions. Well done. If all else fails, I can always employ the oldest leverage of all, blackmail. St. Focus isn't within my domain, but if, he, if the deals happen to take place here, well... He pleased 
displeased with his loophole. He finds a lot of those, talks about working within the system of getting things done. I hardly understand the rules he plays by, let alone how to bend them. But when it comes to me, I figured out he's breaking them. Thomas leans forward, his craggy face moves from half shadow into full light like a moon waxing through its faces. What about the other task I've set you? Have you found out more about the voice? I'm trying a different voice. Because... Anyway. Because. The voice of the blood. A fringe group of radical eugenicists, anarch who keep turning up when I look into sources for blood harvesting. Tamas once called them a hop and a skip from Salat, whatever that means, but I do know they're dangerous. Before Tamas took me in, I'd run odd job from a few anarchs, including this one guy, Lidurk until I cut him out of a couple deals and he caught, he caught me at it, almost killed me. As it turns out, good old Lidak isn't quite a member of the voice, but he's, he has connections to one of their cells, I have connections to him. I'm pretty sure it is the main reason Thanos keeps me around. But before I answer him, I have a question of my own about all this. I ask diplomatically. I do know a few things I've been working on. It like he asked. I always have to prove my worth to full bloods. Tamas protects me from Lidak and his friends. He even teaches me when the mood takes him, but I sometimes wonder if that's only to make me more useful to him. Uh, you never know. People disguise help into manipulation. I'm concerned. I support you. But it's all for them, so be careful. That's the the dilemma of the agent principle um, dynamic. Sometimes I wonder if this all my life, if this is all my life will ever be. Back when you picked me up, I told you everything I knew about Lidak business, Lidak's business, and that was useful to you. But you asked me to keep going. Find out more, so I have been. I'm grateful to you for everything you've done to help me, of course I am. But haven't I repaid, repaid you by now? He's nice enough like a mile of full blood, and I was careful with my words, but I still brace after asking that. I clench my, my jaw. Thomas watches me a moment in silence before surprising me, giving his horse cow, cow, his horse cow of a laugh. What? I don't know what that means. Horse cow. Okay. Let's keep voice.
You think I'm using you, is that it, Florian? I am, of course. I make no secret of that. I stare at him, mouth open. It's what Kindred do. We're predators, but outside of some gangrels, most usually the kind who run in packs. The only way we have a society at all is by building a web of favors and depth. Depth. <laughs> my lisp is getting my way, and my accent is probably not helping. Everyone owes each other. Everyone uses each other. Ugh. It's it's what I it's the political bullshit drama that I like about those Vampire the Masquerade games, which is great because you do that very well and you talk about it in a pretty perfect way. But also when it becomes something that happens in real life, I find that so toxic. You use me right back, you know. But I guess that's what cooperation is. You do something to me, for me, I do something for you. That's how companies are being built. So it's really tricky to make sense of all that toxicity. It's it's quite... It's really the dilemma of... Can you... Can you live without having relationships and whether it's romantic relationships or work relationships or everyone uses their relationships to advance their own game, but I found that really toxic. It transformed everyone into a, a pawn, and some people <laughs> have told me before it's all a mean to an end, but I'm like, this is not what friendships should be. This is quite toxic, and business, why not? It's the business, but when it's about romantic relationships or friendships, that should not be the case. Keeping friends so you can manipulate others and gain advantage over others is not really what friendship should be about. That's... I find that toxic. And it's funny that I like that about the game, because I don't like that in real life. But that's just... That's just me, so it seems, because everyone is playing that game. Of course I do. He has no idea what my life is like, always stuck somewhere, halfway between. I can walk in the sun, the beast inside me never breaks free to rampage, but I still have to drink blood to survive. I'm still not human, and never can be again, and his kind hates mine. If Thomas is able to offer me any protection at all, I'll do whatever I have to do to ensure he continues. I owe you everything I have, and I can never forget that. But you do a lot for me too, of course. Of course I'm using that. The night we met, he saved my life. And no full-blooded vampire ever does any favor without calling in the fee for it later. But working for, for him isn't anywhere as bad as dying in, a, in an alley. So yes, I do what I must. Oh, Florian, you're more a vampire than you ever give yourself credit for being. It's symbiotic. I use you, you use me, we both get what we need. He, sound, he sounds amused more than anything. Maybe even pleased with me for admitting it. He 
You don't even sound upset about that ID, me using you. Tamas laughed again and shakes his head. Don't shake me. Why would I be- oh. Oh, that was him talking. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. I should pay attention to the highlight. It's kind of subtle, but yeah, I didn't pay attention before and I noticed it, but I didn't realize he was still on this guy when I started talking. Why would I be upset? Let me confirm this for you, friend. All kindred use each other's expect it, and you'll never be disappointed. And any leak who tells you they are not choosing you is lying, and you have to ask yourself why and what if they, what it is they really want from you. Very well. So it's a matter of withholding what I know to prolong my usefulness or ensuring that he keeps me by proving I can do what he wants of me. But there you go, it's all about how much do you how much do you play each other's to keep having the advantage and I find that not great. I'm quite truthful and I say what I think and most people don't. They just play that toxic narcissistic game that It's such a dilemma. It's a great game. It's really a good uh, plot, I think. I really enjoy the input, but I don't enjoy the content. Well, I do enjoy the content, but I, I wish it was not something it was that was so uh, transparent and transferred into everyday life. And it seems that... So I think most of the people, I don't know if they are all from Australia, but I think the two that I actually check the profile of are based in Australia. I think Moira is actually from Perth, I believe. And I don't know where Red... What's his name? Red... Oops, that's not bad. Red Robotics. Uh, I don't know where he's from, but he's in Australia for sure. But I know, no, I don't know exactly where. Um, ba -ba -ba. Very well. So it's a matter of resolving. Da da da. Okay. So I guess I'm gonna give Tamas the information. I am using it him and I'll continue to do it for as long as I can so I have to keep proving I'm worth his time and resources. He may have originally taken me in because of Lidek but maybe if I do well enough with this there will be another job for me afterward. I followed one of Lidek couriers to a meetup and quote some of what they said. Got another name from it, Vadlini. And following up on that is what led me to St. Rocus. The voice keeps popping up whenever I look into the black market blood trade. Tamas drums his finger on the desktop. The clothes making is um, making little thanks on the wood. Then he nods once. Vadlini, 
and St. Roque's Hospital. I will look into it. Keep at this, Florian. He seems pleased. I relax. He'll probably dismiss me soon. It is interesting though, St. Roque's is not in Buddha and you and yet you cross the Danube so very often. Or not. His tone is mild, but I can tell he's probing. His eyes have that keen glint. I should know better than to try to keep secrets from a Nosfer too, but I've managed it before. I lie and tell him I only go there to end. I want to seem useful, but I'm not sure I should tell Tamas any of my own secrets, and especially not about William, not after he helped the help he offered me. Nurse far too like secrets, far too much to be safe with them. You never know when they might decide to use the, uh, what they know. Now I go into Buddha to feed sometimes. You can find people taking off out their dogs and not paying attention. Or uh, in some of the nicer neighborhoods, people might forget to lock their windows. It does not always pan out, but when it does, it's easy hunting. Tamas drums his fingers on the desk, the clothes making little things on the wood. His eyes are sharp. Buddha is not within my domain, you shouldn't end there. Why well, I can I can't monitor you if something goes wrong? I shake my head. He must know I keep things from him. I don't think he's entirely convinced now, but at least he's impressing him. To hunt outside your man, your domain all the time. I appreciate that you keep an eye on me, but I go all over Budapest working for you, and you can't watch me then either. Tamas doesn't look satisfied, but he'll have to be. certain of that if I were you. Uh, is that Tamas talking? I, I wouldn't be certain of that if I were you. I do have my ways. Just be careful, Florian. I have invested a lot of time and resources into you and keep working on the voice. Now, was there anything else tonight? I consider... There is always uh, there is something I need if I want to hold on to. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. There is something I need if I want to hold on to what few benefits if I get from being even halfway a vampire. A test of Tamas Vitae, so I can keep using the bloodborne discipline, which makes me, which makes my night a little easier.
asking is awkward and I hate being even more indebted, but I can't put it off anymore. Put it off anymore. One way or another, I need it. I ask more tact tactfully. Mm -hmm. Asking to drink another vampire's blood isn't quite like asking to make out with them, but it's not not like that either. It's weirdly intimate, so I'm circums uh, circumspect about how I ask. I'll never be as good as you as at that disappearing tree, but being able to hide more effectively would be helpful for the voice job. It's been a while now since I've been able to make that work. Tamas chuckles warmly, surprising me. You need my vitae. You need my vitae. I wonder how long it would take before you ask me again. Your restraint is admirable. It's easy to become addicted. Blood leeches are pitiable wretch wretches if dangerous ones, but moderation in all things, even in moderation, yes, when you need it, just ask me, he rolls up his, look, he rolls up his sleeve, fetch me a, oh, fetch me a cup from the sideboard, will you, <laughs> I'm getting confused in between the two characters, I retrieve the cup and set it in front of him, I wonder why he doesn't ask me to drink right from his wrists. In fact, he's never asked me to, never tried to take advantage of my potential ignorance of blood bonds. Tamas bites open his own wrist and drips Vitae thick as syrup into the cup. I can smell it, and my fangs ache in my jaw. He is right that I could get hooked all too easily. He hands me the cup. I drink. Sweeter than honey, richer than wine, Tamas Vitae slides down my throat and something inside me responds to it. The blood, welcoming this new infusion, I don't know what my face looks like, but Tama smiles indulgently. Do you need help feeding now to make better use of that? I shake my head. No, I can handle it, thank you. When I leave Tama's lair, I descend several sets of stairs and emerge into a humid tunnel. I exit through a public toilet in Kaliti Station, where the green and red lines of the underground intersect. New scene! I can see a naked woman on the couch and a naked man wielding a sword. As to why I would cross the Danube again, well, a thin blood learns early on that it's early on that it's better not to lay all your faith at the feet of a single altar. Tonight I sit in William's living room on a frankly unimpressive sofa covered by a quilt. The entirety of his apartment is forgettable except for the painting that hangs on every wall. He moves out, uh, <laughs> he moves about, <laughs> gathering pastel oils and setting them in a box. I look at him. Always pallid, never bothering to flush his cheek with blood, dark circles around his eye which makes, which make him look very ill sleep deprived or heavily drugged. In other words, just shy of dead. I should be forthcoming with you. Ah, oh, um, I sh I I'm gonna try to do a more posh accent for William. Like, I need to use my regular voice for the, for Florian, I guess, and William will be a bit more posh like that. I should be forthcoming with you. 
I startle at his sudden address. He's barely even looking my way. I ask for clarification. About what? Fan wrinkles appears in him, on his temples when he smiles. Perhaps many things, but I don't begrudge you, begrudge you your privacy, so I hope you won't begrudge me mine. Now, this is about your predicament. The fact you are thick-blooded and me clearly knowing about it. I now deeply a cold weight settling in my gut. How did you learn that? A few converging matters confirmed it. When one is neither Kamila nor any other overt faction, one learns to navigate the waters between. You would know, and so do I. So let us say that I listened to what a Malkavian friend of mine had to say, enough hints to learn that a certain man called Lidek would really enjoy getting his hand on a thin blood called Florian. I ask what else he knows. And is that all that you know about me? He leans against the table, his hand holding the, the edge. I know that on occasion you came sneaking here unseen, which, all things considered, is a fairly good idea. I didn't even know Thin Blood could do that. And seen to mortal eyes, but clearly not to his, I came to his small house that I cannot believe is his true haven. Surely he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be so foolish as to show me where he spent his days. Other times I came to Buddha to check on my old piano teacher, whom I still remember with uncompl uncomplicated fondness. A lost life. William's smooth voice shakes me from the memory before I, it can take all too deeply. Presumably that makes you very useful to Mr. Vec. I stare at him and almost and almost human despite his despite his look is like. If it's any consolation to you, that one was much harder to figure out. I wet my lips, take off my shoes, and tuck my feet under me as I lie against the sofa. In the silence, William tilts his head as if to reframe me. Going to his cupboard, he takes out a pencil and one of his sketchbooks. The sofa winds under his weight as he hits, uh, as he sits <laughs> at the other end, facing me, wielding the pencil at an angle, his wrist held just so. This is the third time he has drawn me in black and white. I ask him about himself to even the score. Working with Lidex Anarch and for Tamas afterwards. He taught me, uh, has taught me the value of information. Maybe they will forever prevent me from playing their game at the same level they do, but training doesn't hurt, and maybe I want to know William a little better. The pencil scratches the paper rhythmical, rhythmically. Rhythmically? I don't even, I'm not sure how to say it in English. Um, I can't imagine myself playing piano in his room. At this as this man fills his page with my face, his mouth green eyes flicker up and down, searching and capturing my features to transfer them to, to his art. I'm always filtered through a full blood gaze. In this case, at the very least, it's pleasant. You never told me whose domain this is. I only realize he has stopped, stopped breathing entirely when I see him deliberately inhale, presumably so he can speak. It belongs to a rather influential clanmate of mine. She is partly to be thanked for the fashionable renaissance. Renaissance? 
Renaissance like that? Of Bartok Bella Boulevard in Ujbuda, and I believe was trying to do the same here. Residents aren't very keen on this idea, though. I ask if he knows anything about the voice of the blood. This one is both a gamble and a risk. By his own admission, he skillfully navigates the spaces in between kindred factions. I presume he could access the fringes of vampiric, vampiric society too, if he wanted to. What Tamas will think of me mentioning this to William is only going to be relevant if he finds out. I shift carefully on the sofa, turning to look at the landscape of green rolling hills, its frame unable to rival the beauty of the painting. William Sain says nothing of my change of position. He hardly ever, ever protests such minutiae. Minis Say, since it seems you can't find out things, if you put your mind to it, do you know anything about a group called the Voice of the Blood? Williams, William Ums, as if he was looking over the headlines in the morning newspaper. A group of extremist anarchs with firm, strong opinions on the annihilation of the sect as a concept. Kamila anarchs movements, you name it dangerous as most extremists are, and probably holding peculiar views about undeath being a powerful gift or whatever the like. That was not a lot. He still speaks of his vampirism in a very blasé manner, a thread that has often resurfaced since the night of our very first meeting. When I look... Wait, what? <laughs> When I took his hand on the fateful night of, his, of our first meeting, it was icy cold. I thought little of it in the moment, too distracted by the pangs of my anger, but it, was, it has remained consistent all through the long months of our acquaintanceship. His, hand, his hands are always cold. I regard him carefully. I see, I'm looking into it for Thomas. Thomas, as you likely figured out. His answer is placid. I, I did, yes. I remained silent for a long moment. I can probe for more or perhaps see if I can startle something more of a reaction from him. I tell him I can walk in the sun. I shift carefully on the sofa, turning to look at a landscape of green rolling hills, its frame unable to rival the beauty of the painting. William says nothing on the change of position. He hardly ever protests such many fear. Yeah, we, we already went through that. <laughs> But that's just how dialogue goes. I wonder if I can shake his truth a little by sharing something more astounding. Vampires always miss their light, at least in stories. Oh, and I don't have to make it sound real, only suggest it. What would you say if I told you that I can walk in the cell? Something very close to a smirk tugs at his mouth, even if he doesn't look up. Really? I would say that so can I. I blink. Now he looks up. It's a joke. Oh, his eyes remain on me, holding a rare glimmer of curiosity. Can you? Perhaps... I can let this one go, you must have wondered. After all, how I managed to survive the streets in the first time we met. The first time? Eh? The streets the first time we met. The sky was this close to pinking. Yes, actually, however, this, wo this old curse situation worked for me. It has decided I don't burn in daylight. William arches an eyebrow briefly then makes a small, fascinating, fascinated sound. Is that his old reaction? Do you miss that? 
my probing, probing gives him pause, and I wet my lip, my lips in the silence. Oh my gosh, it's been uh, an hour already. Not particularly. All I miss is the lack of natural light for painting. I really the breath. Is it all this? Uh, is it all this easy for you? That makes him snort snort softly. Some things are easy, I suppose. Others less so. Much like during my living days back in London. Oh, that was. Yeah. Nonetheless, he must have been in this world for a while, for him to feel as if he was. He has it all figured out. I tilt my head. England, London, a long while ago. How old are you anyway? Old enough to know a significant number of people, or some of them, and be old in return. Old enough that must leave me in peace. I have been told... I have been told before not to use the word vampires. They are kindred. They are licks. And I am whatever insult or description they choose on a given night. But I've never heard any of them self-refer as people. William flexes his finger elegantly, sets the pencil down in his laps, in his lap, and turns the sketchbook around as he hands it to me. I take it. Uh, our fingers touch, as always, is our cold. The sketch is not. However, it's as if the graphite had been caressing me. The skittish posture, but my eyes so keen. It sees me with uncanny beauty. When I finally live out in the quiet streets, humidity settles on my skin. I look up at the full moon, pale as William's face, and think of blood. Alrighty. Back to the prince's heaven. I look at the prince. My muscle aching from tension, my stomach heavy. I wet in my head the two choices laid before me. Thomas and William have both been kind enough to me, each in his way. They have both helped me each for his reasons. Thomas is open about what he wants from me. He is using me, but he protects me too. William's motives are far less certain, as is the value of any protection he could give. Perhaps he has some kind of feelings for me. Perhaps he knows every single thing I've ever thought in his presence. But in the end, there's only one choice I can make. Um, well, I looked at William and he didn't seem to want to help me, but Tamas seems to be protecting me and helping me more than William does, at least he's more direct about it, while William seems to be playing a bit more. Um, well, it's funny because I said I didn't really want to, or was never really keen on Nosfera 2, but uh, I might go with Tamas.
what do you think? Oh, I don't like choices. <laughs> I guess I chose William first though, and he's kept... silent and still try to... help me. So... I think I'm gonna, I don't know, I think I'm gonna stick with the Toreador. That was my first choice and I've learned to trust my gut feelings, so... I'm not gonna... Oh, it's tricky because my gut feeling is with William, but William is not straightforward with me as much as Thomas is. So dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. I'm gonna stick with William just because. I look at Thomas, insouciant, confident, thinking himself in control of this situation. He gives no hint of nerve as he stands waiting for the outcome. Christ, is it aggravating? Thomas Veg has known about me for months, both that I am thin-blooded and that I am undeclared. He has kept it secret, intentionally breaking Camarilla rules, so he could continue to exploit me. <gasps> and Thomas look at me, startled, and from the other side of the room, William stands and moves forward, stepping into the silence left in the wake of my accusation. He bows formally. William Harley, child of Uland, Brighton of the court of Mithras, and Silla of Clan Toreador of the Tench generation. With your grace, your majesty, I will offer myself as an alternative. I renew my old lo I renew my old loyalty to the Kamaila and its traditions, and will remove myself to whichever neighborhood in which your majesty cares to give me domain. <coughs> Sorry. The pale oval of the prince's face sharpens slightly with interest as she looks between the three of us, and I hear a quiet murmur from the assembled dungeons. Courtly intrigue, their favorite entertainment. A serious accusation. Thomas Veg of the Nosferatu, how do you answer this charge? The moment of surprise of the moment of surprise having passed. I can almost watch as Thomas marshals his wits. He smiles at the prince, charming as ever, and gestures nonchalantly. Easily, your majesty, I will admit to have in Ben certain rules where young Florian is concerned, but I have my reasons, and they are good ones. An unbranded thin blood is a rare asset of great worth in intelligence gathering. Due to this effort on the Kamila's behalf, I have procured information about the insurgents group called the Voice of the Blood, which has prevented an attack upon the Tower's blood trade supply line. I watched the display wetting my lips. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I watched the display wetting my lips. The way Prince Anastasia looks at Tamas is sharp, dangerously close to a reproach. William, William turns to him, his expression mild. 
I dare say, Mr. Vague, that you didn't bend the rules so much as break them. Quite the admission of guilt. I will add, you are hardly the only one to have information on the voice of the blood. The group disavows even the Anat movement and is borderline independent, which makes it movement <laughs> traceable with my experience in such areas. Mr. Mayor would be valuable if he can be directed under my guidance. Tama's answering look is just as mild, though it turns toward Williams with a glimmer of calculation. It has been said it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. My results in this matter speak to the, for themselves, and while young Florian was not branded, he was under my direct oversight during the entirety of his, this investigation. Your Majesty, I will apologize for the breach of minor rules, and assure you I will keep working for our safety. My loyalty is known and tested. It can't be said of for an otaki who has never before come into your court. I am your elder by at least a century, Mr. Vig, if not more. Make no, oh, make not so many assumptions about me and his court, and his court. Thomas eyes narrow. An otaki is with you, Florian, before tonight as well. My chest, oh, my chest clenches with growing distress. Of course, he had me followed. William again doesn't miss a bit. As declared, as a declared kindred, not an unbranded thin blood. What the lie your instruction, Mr. Vague? Thomas has no time to answer, though he opens his mouth. Very well, that is enough. <laughs> Prince Anastasia's voice doesn't uh, resound like that of the woman in the livery standing next to her. Quieter though it is, it still cuts through any further protest. William even turns to her and love lowers his head with perfect etiquette. Thomas too adds nothing further. The prince seems pleased enough by the show of difference. She turns her eyes coolly between the two men. She turns her eyes coolly between the two men. Your efforts in the service of my court are noted and appreciated, Mr. Vague, but we shall have a word about it, about all this. Please sit down. <laughs> C'est pas facile de faire une voix uh, féminine. A note of fear anchors in me, and I shiver while Thomas nods stiffly and sits down. He is not going to let this one go easily, is he? Prince Anastasia turns to William regarding him regarding him critically. Renewed loyalty is it? William nods and turns to a man with a trim beard, sitting to the prince left with an air of satisfied dignity. I will call upon the esteemed keepers of this Elysium, Mr. Georgi Kovacs, and the boons he owes me from my early times in the Camilla, registered in London before its fall. If Mr. Kovacs cares to honor them, I ask to be granted a small but fair domain. The man in question stands clearly in his throat and smoothing down his suit. It is ever my pleasure to ensure that our customs are respected. 
The prince flaps a thin white end. It will be discussed, but now follow Mr. Kovacs to the other room. The scourge grabs me by the shoulder. She manandles me away with surprising ease as we walk after the keeper. Drama, drama, drama! At least there isn't an audience here. The scourge is at my back. I can imagine her claws on my throat all too easily. I do not resist nor try to run. I already rejected their so-called clemency, so I do not think my death will be quite as quick now. One way or another, they want me to hurt. The chamber that take me to is empty but for a stranger and a chair. I look at the chair. So mundane and commonplace that it's somehow more horrifying than a more esoteric torture device would be. The chair could be found at any tattoo joint or L a dentist's office except for the leather straps at wrists and ankles and ankles of course i look at the stranger he's as unremarkable as the chair you wouldn't pass him on the street and know he is a monster he picks up a sharp silver tool and his tone is bored when he addresses the man who is now my guardian where do you want it and temple Somewhere else, it has to be visible. Panic seizes me. My heartbeat quickens through, through some magic I don't understand. The crescent moon, thin blood brand, never fully heals. If they mark my ends, how would I play piano? The Camilla claims this brand is for my protection, if that's even halfway through. Maybe they'll grant me this one request and not take my art away when they take what little illusion of freedom I had left. Please, not the end. I look at my guardian. William looks at me as though he knows everything I'm thinking. He probably does. The nape of the neck. I breathe out with private relief. With quick efficiency, I am strapped into the chair face down and they unfold it until I am prone and spread eagled. I have never felt so vulnerable. The pain, when it comes, is nothing I could have imagined. It's like a bleeding sliver of the sun itself, slipped beneath my skin to burn there forever. I scream until my voice breaks, but as the sharp silver tool pairs uh, back my flesh, I discover that I'm not human enough to pass out. Another mercy denied me. William leads the way into the corridors of the palace, descending towards street level on the stairs. 
He stops and turns to me. I can barely see his eyes in the penumbra, and his hand is pale and spidery. He lifts it to cup my cheek for a second. It's cool against my skin, a welcome change for the night. When he moves away and, he walk, and we walk into the lobby, the same doorman who greeted the scotch now greets him, opening the door. Now, like then, I only acknowledge with a silent look. We pass under the main arch and exit into Andrasi Avenue. I glance up at the elegant, elegant, <laughs> eloquent, <laughs> at the elegant grey stones of the facade. They turn and trail behind him, hurting and stunned. Too many questions jam my brain. Will I have to continue my investigation on the voice of the blood of the Kamaila, uh, for the Kamaila? Will Tamas come look for me? How are the Kamaila found out about me in the first place? Someone must have told them, but who and why? Was it William? I watch him pose on the sidewalk, adjusting his tie in silence. I ask him why he helped me. I halt next to him. I would call a taxi, but I don't have a phone on me, and William doesn't use one. I suspect he doesn't know how. That leaves us with walking, taking a bus, or the underground. The idea of the latter makes my stomach simmer with anxiety. Frankly, Thomas should have expected this. After all, he first met me because I backstabbed someone else. They call it betrayal, I call it survival. Why did you do this? Step in for me. William's eyebrows rise slightly. Why not, Florian? That's not an answer. You traded the freedom you enjoyed for what? What do you want from this? My freedom for your life seems a fair bargain. Only one of the two can be regained, and you may even share in it. And perhaps I have a type. People who are in desperate need of help and whose pride will not suffer the shame of asking for it. I breathe in. Too tired to insist on better answers or to argue against him, I really the breath of wet and wet my lips again. I like my my lips to be wet. <laughs> Perhaps it takes pity on me, moving to my side and placing a hand on my back. I tense up, then relax. Come, boy, let's get going. The one in crescent moon carved into my neck throbs and aches. I suppose it always will. Cars glide down the avenue, passing in and out of pools of street light, and at this hour of the night the road is more likely uh, more lively than than the sidewalk. William and I walk along. It is a whole other world, hidden beneath the city. I never even suspected it might exist before becoming half a monster and being dragged into the darkness. I'm only half part of this world too, but there's no longer any way to escape it. I've made my choices and now I have to live with them. Oh. Another 
another game that talks to me so deeply. Well, moral of the story. You have no other choice than to play the game. Go and download it. Description, the description of the link. Uh, let yourself be carried away by the dance macabre of this world of darkness we live in. This is the end, <clears throat> the end of Winning Crescent. I can change the resolution. There's a glossary, which is great, and credits. So the team, Gaia Fiorenza. Writing, narrative, design, art, editing. Finch, Kathy Mathias. Writing, editing, copy, editing. Very, that has done the art, UI design and programming. Moira, programming, sound design and UX design. Red Robotics, that has done the music. Other credits, Creepy Atmosphere by Blocky. Art and sound asset are used under an open as access or CC uh, attribution license or are the, in the public domain. We do not own these materials. Oh, okay. Sounds are taken from freesoundlibrary.com and freesound.org. Three strike with room reverb uploaded by ta 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 ta. Art assets are taken from pixels and unsplash under their free license. Oh, okay, so they did not do any of that. I don't know. We also thank rawpixel.com, the Smithsonian Institution, blah blah blah. Thank you to Paradox Game and the World of Darkness team for allowing us to bring our vision into their excellent world. Cool. So. Dark Park. Pretty cool. Pretty cool game, I have to say. Um, real cool story. Good length. Cool music. Fun twists. Not too many characters, which is good because in a story like this, when there's too many characters, you get confused. Even um, Tamaz, Tamar, like I heard the name first, but then I was like, oh, I didn't remember it anyway. So I was a bit confused at the first the first couple of times, and yeah, I hope. Someone else will play it and make different choices than I did because I would watch that. So please um, let me know if you do and let me know if you enjoyed my, my confused reading <laughs> and silly voice acting. <laughs> that is not uh, my job at all. But definitely uh loved the experience an hour and a half the perfect time uh it's a lot of reading when you're recording and blah 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 but if you do it just for yourself for the fun of it definitely a good um a good story to go through but yeah like i said at some point i wish there was a bit more gameplay than just um 
storytelling and dialogue choices. I like more than that. But uh, amazing job, guys. Um, I can't wait. You could you could definitely expand on that. <laughs> you could keep on building stories, keep Florian's uh, troubles going in between the Nosfer to the prince and the Toreador. So yeah, if you do, I hope you do. Um, please let me know on Twitter or on whatever social media. Um, thanks again for joining us and sharing this beautiful story of machinations and and um, oh, what's the what's the word that I use? Les manigans, political bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit, <laughs> but that's what we like in those games. Have a good one. Talk to you later.